You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome to Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. This is your host, Tim Link. Thank you so much for joining us today. My special guest today is Emmy-nominated screenwriter, Writers Guild of America Award winner, and New York Times bestselling multi-book author, Rita Mae Brown. And Rita's going to be here talking to us today about her latest book, Sneaky Pie for President. Ask not what your cat can do for you. Ask what you can do for your cat. Well, isn't that the truth? Cats always want us to do what they want us to do. <laughs> so we're really forward to talking to, to Rita May and Sneaky, uh, Sneaky Pie here in just a moment. So everybody stay tuned. I will be right back after these commercial breaks. You're listening to Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. Petco, where the pets go. Pet Life Radio has tail wagging, fur flying, fabulous deals for our listeners from Petco. Get six dollars off your order of sixty dollars or more, and up to forty percent off the entire Petco site. That's right, but that's not all. Because you're a Pet Life Radio listener, you'll also get free shipping on your order of forty nine dollars or more. Six dollars off, up to forty percent off, and free shipping from Pet Life Radio and. Petco. To get these awesome deals, go to PetcoDeals.com. That's PetcoDeals.com. Petco. Where the pets go. I'm not much of a reader, but I do wish I were more well-read. There are so many great books coming out. I wish I could find a way to keep up. Audible.com makes it easy to stay well-informed and catch up on your reading simply by listening. Audiobooks from Audible turn downtime into uptime. You'll be more productive and become well-read. Now I'm able to catch up on all the great books I've been wanting to read. With Audible, I feel smarter. Pet Life Radio listeners, try audible.com now and get your first 30 days of Audible Listener Gold Membership plan free. And get a free audiobook. Choose from over 100,000 titles. To get this great deal, go to audibledeals.com. That's audibledeals.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back. Welcome back to Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. This is your host, Tim Link. And joining me today is Rita Mae Brown and Sneaky Pie Brown. Rita Mae, welcome back to the show. Oh, thanks for having me back. Oh, it's always a pleasure. Always interested to see what you and Sneaky Pie have to say. And uh, why don't you tell the uh, listeners a little bit more about the most recent book, Sneaky Pie for President. Well, you know what? She realizes we need help. (laughs) We have just made such a tremendous mess of it that she's decided she's simply got to run for president. And there's nothing in the Constitution that says you have to be a human. And she's born in America, and she thinks she's a viable candidate. At first, I didn't pay too much attention. But, you know, as she continued sort of spooling out her program, I thought, hey, I think I'll vote for her. And what are some of these wisdoms that Sneaky Pie has that would make her a good president? Well, there's a couple real simple ones, like you don't breed past the food supply, the food (laughs) and the water supply. I mean, remember, this is a cat. She lives in nature, uh, and she's not dazzled by technology. She knows technology can fail, and that we have to be good about our resources and be responsible about what we do. I mean, her theory is if you can't feed it, you don't have it. And she feels that uh, we're in desperate problem that way. The other thing that she's really great about is she thinks that we have to respect each species' mating patterns and uh, that she thinks all cats and dogs or most of them should be neutered or spayed. But one of her most important points, and I really think she's right, Tim, is that any human running for public office at the state or national level should be neutered or spayed. (laughs) <laughs> she, she thinks it'll, it'll focus the men and calm the women what do you think <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it would give a, a totally new meaning to the buck stops here I think that's the way it works <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the truth oh god but I mean, uh, I mean she's looking at us you know with a lot of clarity 
Yeah, it makes sense. I like your platform so far, environmentally and uh, conscious and uh, keeping everybody on track. Now, I guess the general question is she's got a good platform and some good ideas that would make her a fantastic president, but why in the world would a cat want that kind of job? My gosh, they've got it pretty well made, don't they? Well, they really do. I mean, I've never gotten anybody to take care of me the way I take care of her. But she realizes that if, if animals don't do something, a lot of them aren't going to be here in uh, four or eight years. I mean, uh, we're just destroying other, other life at an unfortunately rapid rate. And, uh, I mean, domestic animals would appear to be okay. But we have not been good stewards of the land, really. Yeah, it's you know it's a very interesting comment. I, I try to uh, keep a very neutral stance on things and let people share their ideas and opinions. But I think every like sneaky pie, you have to speak up every once in a while. And uh, I know just in my personal life, we have this wonderful property up in the um, the Blue Ridge Mountains of Georgia, and it's a nice three acres, very uh, wilderness driven. And you know the plan is someday to build a nice little cabin up there. But it is in a homeowners community with a lot of great amenities, etc. But the challenge we're facing now, or the community's facing now, is the fact that in nature, as you know, uh, wildlife runs rampant, and there's a lot of beautiful uh, turkeys and uh, raccoons, etc., around, and there's a plethora of deer. And now the community in this uh, nice little community is wanting to uh, take care of some of the deer, move them out, uh, destroy them, whatever they need to do. And to me, I don't know about you, but I thought moving in nature was for you to share as a human with nature because it's theirs to begin with. I'm with you. I only believe that you kill an animal if you're going to eat it. I mean, truthfully. And at this point in our society, very few of us need to do that. I do know that Hunters for the Hungry have made a big gift a statement each year in each of the different states, donating meat for, for people who literally don't have enough to eat. But for most of us, we're not in that situation at all. And anything that gets in our way, we just destroy it, whether it's deer or raccoons or possums or whatever. And then if we're not doing it that way, we're certainly doing it with pesticides. Yeah, that, that's for sure. I, I just found it interesting, you know, uh, you have an opportunity to move out into the country, into the uh, the beautiful wilderness, and there's natural plant life around, uh, but people get upset because their particular plants and flowers that they want to plant uh, are getting eaten by the deer, which... <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I think the deer were there first. Yeah, they were there first, and it's like, well, if, you know, it would save me hundreds and hundreds and thousands of dollars if I had to go to my local uh, home improvement store to buy plants and flowers to plant in my backyard, uh, just let nature take its course. You know, it, it is amazing, but one of the interesting things that this cat did is research. As far as she knows, no government official has ever toted up the income the revenue generated by animals, and she had a, quite a difficult time getting a lot of the information, and there's some she'll never get. But for instance, just hunting licenses, uh, hunting and fishing, it's $122.3 billion. Each state, all they have to do is issue a piece of paper. They have to deliver nothing. So that's really easy money. Uh, other things like, you know, there's $74 billion a year from raising and slaughtering cattle. All of these things are, I mean, an enormous amount of money, something that doesn't involve killing. The pet industry is 50, uh, what did she find out, $50.84 billion. And so she's trying to, to demonstrate what animals contribute to the economy. And if they're contributing this much, it seems that we should take care of them. Yeah, absolutely. Good points. Good research. So it's just not – now, see, there's your flaw, I think, uh, Rita May, is the fact that sneaky pie makes sense and it's just not a bunch of rhetoric. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, I'm with you. I mean I, I, I mean, I probably shouldn't say this on the radio, but I am so dispirited at what we've become. I mean, just a lot of posturing and pontificating and ugliness and ego, rampant ego. I want – a man or a woman, to shut up and do the job. Amen. That sounds good to me. <laughs> well, I don't think we can have a political, even a political animal interview here without having some comments of that sort. You know, we've got to take a stance somewhere. So. Well, that's why I want the cat. She's not blinded by ideology. She, no animal is. They accept what is. They're not worried about what should be or trying to cover up and deny. They accept. And, I mean, if they can change it, they might. But we are continually deluding ourselves. It's one of the real problems with the human mind. 
the ability to divert people's attention and to imagine. And now, what is sold? Both conventions, what is sold? Fear. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. think that's how you solve a problem. No, well, I don't, but it seems like we do live in a very fearful society in a lot of states, whether we're talking about politics or other areas of, of life. And it seems like as humans, uh, especially here in the United States, we love fear, though we say we don't, and we love a good train wreck, though we say yeah. we don't. That's the truth, isn't it? <laughs> the bigger the train wreck, whether it's a person or a group or, or an actual train wreck, we just love those stories for some reason. Yeah, and animals don't. Yeah, they don't care. They'd rather have less train wrecks and just more uh, times to take long naps and get the food. Well, in her case, tuna and catnip. I mean, she knows what really counts. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Now, Rita May, I would, really, I, I'm always amazed by the uh, the books and the uh, everything that you put together, the great story ideas. But I want to make sure listeners really understand the, the breadth of work that you've done. You have sold more than 4.5 million copies of the Mrs. Murphy Mystery Series. And I think it's just fantastic. And and I know when you were on last, you had your 20th book in the series, I believe it was. Right. I've written 52 novels and I don't know how many screenplays and teleplays. But but we should clarify for your listeners that I'm getting long in the tooth, so I've had a lot of time to do it. (laughs) I was going to say, how... how did you come up with all those great books and you're still only 21, 22 years old? So. Uh, yeah. You know, I think, I think most people have stories in them. If they could just get them out, most people are a lot more creative than they give themselves credit for. Uh, and maybe it wouldn't come out in literature. Maybe it would be film or dance or something else. But there are very few truly dull people in this world. I'm afraid their circumstances make them pull in their horns and they become dull, but they're really not underneath it all. No, we all have, you're absolutely right, we all have hidden uh, talents and purposes for being here, and uh, often we get told uh, that we can't or shouldn't do those type of things, and, or we let those roadblocks pop up, you know, and think that we're always going to have tomorrow to put it out there. Well, okay, you have a cat, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, you put an obstacle in front of your cat, and what does he or she do? She finds a way to go around it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we really do need to be more like cats. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it's interesting. I was, uh, we've got a, actually another, we've got 10 cats. So we um, have feral cats that uh, we have trapped, neutered, and released. And uh, fortunately or unfortunately at times, all of them have chose to stay here because they have such a plush life. <laughs> <laughs> Go figure. But we also have a wonderful new uh, puppy. A new puppy that's uh, nine weeks old. We've had her for about a week and a half now, and a little schnauzer, a little white schnauzer. And, and she's absolutely the same thing. Uh, if we put a roadblock in front of her, she sits there and looks at us for a second, recalculates, and figures a way either around, above, or straight through the subject to get to where she needs to be. And I think we need to do that as humans as well. Schnauzers are so smart. That little dog, when she grows up, could take your college boards for you. <laughs> well, you know, there's always got to be one smart one in the house, so we've got to <laughs> keep that going. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to take a little quick commercial break. Uh, we'll come back with Rita Mae Brown and Sneaky Pie Brown, uh, talk a little bit more about the book Sneaky Pie for President, right after these messages. Uh, you're listening to Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. Introducing the new Brett Michaels Pets Rock Collection, exclusively at PetSmart. I created it for the pets that rock your world. Shop the Brett Michaels Pets Rock Collection and celebrate PetSmart's 25th anniversary with up to 25% off thousands of items on the PetSmart site. Plus free shipping on orders of $49 or more. Go to PetSmartDeal.com. That's PetSmartDeal.com. P-E-T-S-M-A-R-T-D-E-A-L.com. I don't make any decisions about who to hire without going to Angie's List first. You'll find reviews on home repair to health care written by people just like you. With Angie's List, I know who to call and I know the results will be fantastic. Angie's List. Who you can trust. Go to Angie'sList.com forward slash rights and get 25% off any subscription. That's Angie'sList.com forward slash rights. W-R-I-T-E-S. 
Dyson. The new Dyson Animal Vacs are powerful bagless upright vacuums for homes with pets. Air muscle and radio root cyclone technology generates the strongest suction power to powerfully remove dust, dirt, and pet hair from the home or car. To order your Dyson Animal Vac, go to DysonDeals.com. DysonDeals.com to order your Dyson Animal Vac today. Dyson, music to your ears. Coast to coast and around the world, it's All Behave with Arden Moore. Find out why cats and dogs do the things they do and get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get great tail-wagging pet tips and have a fur-flying fun time. All Behave with America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Every week on demand, this is the place for a special paparazzi treat. Only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back. Welcome back to Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. This is your host Tim Link. I'm here with Rita Mae Brown and Sneaky Pie Brown talking about the latest book, Sneaky Pie for President. Ask not what your cat can do for you. Ask what you can do for your cat. Great slogan. Now, Rita Mae, I want to talk to you about these slogans because Sneaky Pie has a lot of them, a lot of nice little slogans that I think hit home. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about some of those? Well, I think her, the one that makes me laugh the most is her campaign slogan, which is, I can't do any worse. And I think there's a lot to that. And then she has one, think outside the litter box. Her little buttons are put on the back of the book, and, and the publisher came up with those. They were, they're so clever up there at Random House and Ben. We, we all had just a lot of fun with it. But, um, but her, her slogans, I mean, I'm sure if she, if she were just talking to cats, she'd promise cat nuts. If she were talking to dogs, she'd promise some bones. But she'd try to deliver. She's not quite as enthusiastic about dogs serving in the public trust, but she knows she has to have a dog as vice president. So I don't know what kind of slogan <laughs> she's going to come up with for that. Absolutely. And I, and I love the one, read my lips, no new dogs. I, I know. Uh, great, <laughs> that was <great>. mean. <laughs> <laughs> and I love how you slid that in there, you and Sneaky Pie. Uh, the vice president would be a dog. Well, <laughs> we yeah, and, and, the roast. and it's caused quite a rumpus, obviously. If you read Sneaky Five for President, you see all the arguments for and against. And, uh, uh, and she's come to the conclusion that she needs a mutt because Americans are mutts. I mean, really. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and this, of course, disturbs the Corgi and the, uh, and the Jack Russell and some of the others. But my fear is that the Corgi is going to write the Queen, that T. Tucker will actually write. Uh, Queen Elizabeth II, and ask her to take us back. <laughs> I mean, what a scandal that will be. Oh, my goodness. I don't know if anybody wants us anymore. I begin to wonder that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the Queen would probably say, hey, you made your bed, now lie in it. Yeah, exactly. You wanted it so bad. Here you go. Be careful what you ask for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my mother used to say, and I'm sure yours did too, you know, if, if God wants to punish you, he'll answer your prayers. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> oh, always be careful what you ask for. That's for sure. Now, Rita Mae, uh, tell us, obviously, it's a fun book, but there's also some little hidden insights in there, some things that make a lot of good sense, as we've talked about. What would you hope the uh, readers walk away with after reading the book? Two things. I would hope they would look at the environment more critically. Something as simple as medications being passed into our water supply, which nobody thinks, very few people think about it. A fellow called Kurt Gilo, who's, um, I think, head or vice president of a pharmaceutical college in Milwaukee, uh, was the first person to clue me into it. It's it's a, a suburb right outside of Milwaukee. And I had never thought about that. But many things that we're doing to our environment, we don't recognize because we don't know the long-range effects of it. Something as simple as Roundup, which probably a lot of your readers have used to kill weeds. Mm -hmm. They say, well, you know, it's okay. You know, if your animals eat it, it'll be fine. Maybe so, but what happens when it gets in the water supply? Mm -hmm. I mean, millions of tons of this stuff will eventually be in the water supply. We don't know. We don't know the long-range effects of any of it. So I would hope that readers would really begin to pull back and try to think critically about that. But the other thing, and Tim, I really mean this, I would hope that readers would close this book 
and be reminded that we're a good and generous people. We are not what is in Washington. Yeah, and you know, it's uh, interesting you say that because it's um, whenever we seem to have the greatest tragedies in this country, it is when it shows our true character. And it's a brilliant character that we have as uh, Americans because whenever there is a challenge, we do tend to step up and put our, our selfishness away and become selfless uh, human beings. As far as I know, we are the only nation since the beginning of recorded history who has ever rebuilt two of our enemies with whom we went to war and millions died. We rebuilt Germany and we rebuilt Japan. Nobody's ever done that. We really are a good and generous people. And I just, uh, I mean, I think we're being led, led down the primrose path by professional politicians who, again, I, ju- I just think it's all ego. And I suspect there's a lot of money sticking to hands. Every time it passes hands, it sticks to some. Mm. But, I mean, I'm, I, the cat's disgusted. That's why she's running. She wants us to get back to who we really are. And all of this polarization, a lot of that is false stuff to get headlines. How can you be polarized when you need to eat? I mean, really. I mean, again, the cat is basic. You need to eat. You need shelter. Because we're humans and we don't have the advantage of a beautiful coat, we need clothing. Mm -hmm. You know, how hard is this? But anyway, she's pretty clear. And she truly believes, as do I, that the difference between the Republican and the Democratic parties is the difference between syphilis and gonorrhea. (laughs) Uh, The worst of two evils, right? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you know how you get them both. Uh, no, I don't know if I want to. This may be a PG show. We may have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we won't say that. But no, we, um, well, anyway, you know. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. And, you know, and I think it's a great way. Obviously, the time in the book's appropriate. And I love the hidden messages in there because it, it should get people. It's, it's a fun book and it, it's always interesting uh, to hear what Sneaky Pie has to say. But it's also, you know, some very heartfelt things in there, things we should be taking a look back and not get caught up just in. Uh, all the rhetoric that, that tends to happen during this time of year. Well, you know, she's an AmeriCat. She really cares. And some of this takes place at Monticello, which is interesting. And the, the illustrations are so wonderful in this book. And one of the ones that just gets me the most is on page 36. Uh, the three animals crossing the lawn up to Monticello in the moonlight. And, uh, and I have done that. I have been there in the moonlight. And I've also been up in the dome where most people don't get to go. Mm-hmm. And there are regular doors. And I put this in the book, but I, I didn't make it up. I want people to know this is the truth. There are regular doors so that workmen could get out on that dome and repair leaks. Jefferson had thought of everything. He <laughs> also put little tiny doors in the big doors for his cats so mm-hmm. they could get out there and they could kill the mice in the attic. Brilliant. You know, it really is. But when people go there, which they don't get to go, you have to have a special guide to take you there and, you know, whatever. But mm-hmm. um, the time I was there, I was there with the director, the new director, who's wonderful. And also the former director, Mr. Jordan, took me there. And the new director is a, a lovely woman called Leslie Bowman. And they look at those little doors and they think most people don't know what they are. Well, of course, I, I did. And um, Mr. Jefferson's mice, because, of course, there still are some mice left, are part of this book and this desire for our country to remain true to the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. And it's a lot of fun, but if you're, any of your listeners have never come to see Monticello, I beseech them to do it. It's a beautiful place, and, and I think you're right. People, they go there, you know, see the, uh, the beauty of it, but to get to the behind the scenes and find out really what his thoughts were behind building it, uh, I think are pretty amazing. Well, years ago, Dan and Lou Jordan, who he was the director for 20 years and, and retired, and then Miss Bowman took over, uh, Leslie Bowman, and, and her husband. Her husband's last name is Newhoff. Well, at any rate, the Jordans had a cat um, who used to patrol Monticello and I think was finally retired uh, due to the vicissitudes of old age. But she was a public servant and did her job very well. <laughs> so, I don't know if when you go to Monticello you'll find another cat. Well, there may be. You never know. You know. I'm sure there's one. It's hard to believe that there's no cats around there anywhere. No, but there's horses now, mm, which is go. really great. Uh, you know, I mean, think about it. Horses, cattle, sheep. We wouldn't be here if it weren't for these animals. Cats, you know, protecting the grain supply, dogs, uh, chasing off predators. I mean, they made America as much as Mr. Jefferson did. That's right, and he recognized that, I'm sure. You know, most of them did. Uh, Washington was fabulous to his animals. 
if you ever get the chance to go to Mount Vernon and look at his stables, they're extraordinary. Yeah, because they, they realize the importance. I'm sure they enjoyed them as well, but I, they realize the importance of just everyday life, what they brought to uh, not only them, but their, uh, to take care of uh, their, their land and their property. I think our ancestors, of course, everybody wants comfort. I mean, we've wanted comfort since the Roman Empire, and they lived pretty good. They had running water and ice cream or gelato or whatever. They lived great, Mm -hmm. but they didn't so much, including our ancestors, they didn't so much try to live above nature. They just wanted to live within it with a little more comfort than if you didn't have a home. And we've kind of, we now think we can control it. And then something like Katrina wakes people up. Absolutely. But, but that's the great thing about Sneaky. She's saying, no, we need to live within the confines of our each species' abilities. Pretty smart. Uh, very smart. Very smart. So there's going to be great insight. Everybody pick up a copy of the book. Uh, it's Sneaky Pie for President by uh, Rita Mae Brown and Sneaky Pie Brown. Where can listeners find out more about you? And the, and the book's going to be everywhere, obviously. But where can people find out more about you and Sneaky Pie? Well, she has um, her website, which is www.catprez.com. I don't have a computer, but obviously Sneaky Pie knows how to do these things. And she also has a Facebook page. I have no idea what that is. I should tell you, but, but I don't know. I think it's, I think it's facebook.com slash Sneaky Pie Brown. I really don't have a computer, but what can I tell you? But, That's but the, cat, the cat is much more advanced than I am. There you go. That's great insight because I, I know you live a uh, very uh, rural life. We'll just put it in that fashion. But not having a computer, how do you go about doing your writing? Is it the old uh, – do you have an old Remington laying around or is it long hands or you got a voice recorder? I have a Montblanc pen, a beautiful diplomat Montblanc pen, which is decades old, and I just whip out a sheet of paper and go to it. Amazing. It doesn't cost much. I mean, the pen does. That they do now. Mine, when I first bought it, was $40, and it took me a month to save the money to get it. But I thought, <laughs> when I have a Mont Blanc pen, I'm a real writer. You know, I think that's a great way to look at it as well. I used to be, uh, before I started working with animals full-time, I used to be in cells, telecom cells. And I remember coming out of college wanting a Mont Blanc, and you know, it was a little pricey because uh, over $100 for a pen when you can buy 12 Bix for a buck 95 or something of that sort. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah, but once I got my first Mont Blanc, and I still have it, I have it in my special journal that I that carry around. And uh, yeah, it, it, I don't know what it is. I, I'm not usually into things, but uh, it made me feel uh, a little bit better about life of that. When I was writing, it meant something because I was writing with a Mont Blanc pen. <laughs> Nothing feels like a diplomat in your hand. I mean, it really is the most extraordinary writing instrument. I think now they're like five or six hundred dollars because of all the gold in the nib. But um, well, you know, when something is beautifully made, you don't have to improve on it. There you go. So the folks from Mont Blanc are listening. You know, sponsorships <laughs> always available. <laughs> 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 well, you know, I kind of hope they are. They should know they've made, well, they know they've made something great, just like the people that make Porsches, Porsche 911s. I mean, you can't improve on it. No, oh, you can't. You can't. Well, that's amazing. I think the work that you do, obviously, Rima, is fantastic. And uh, the, the latest book, big kudos on that, Sneaky Pie for President. And everybody pick up a copy of that. And um, you know, best of luck with the book. What can we, uh, before we let you go, what can we expect next from Sneaky Pie? Well, she started another mystery, a true mystery this time, and it has, I don't really know what she's up to, but it has something to do with corn. Mm. So I'm just letting her, she does whatever she does. I'm just the, the scribe. I mean, I'm, I'm not really the big news in this team. It's her. That's right. Because she's got to keep her, her paws free for other things. So, Well, sometimes, you know, what is it that Mother said? Idle hands do the devil's work. Well, it works for paws, too. <laughs> I think that's a brilliant comment, so we'll leave it at that. <laughs> All right. So everybody, once again, pick up a copy of the book, Sneaky Pie for President, uh, Rita Mae Brown, Sneaky Pie Brown. Uh, Rita Mae, always a pleasure talking to you and uh, hearing also what Sneaky Pie has to say. And we'll look forward to uh, talking to you again on animal rights when you get the next one out. Thank you, sir. All right. Well, we're coming to the end of the show today. I want to thank everybody for listening to Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. I uh, want to thank also Rita Mae Brown for uh, being on the show today. To find out more about me, Tim Link, and uh, the other guests I've interviewed on the show, you can go to PetLifeRadio.com, click on the Animal Rights icon, download the shows you want to listen to, and read the blog. And while you're there, uh, make sure you check out all the other uh, wonderful shows and hosts that we have on Pet Life Radio. That's PetLifeRadio.com. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas for the show, please email me 
You can email me at tim at petliferadio.com, and I'll be glad to answer your questions, uh, entertain your comments, and bring on the people you want to hear most onto the show. So until next time, uh, write a great story about the animals in your life. Share it in a blog, article, or in a book, and who knows? You may be the next guest on Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. Thanks for joining us. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.